sometimes we even feel apart from ourselves, as if all these pieces of the mirror don't add up to one whole person. When we focus on what is real, we can begin to accept ourselves with all our contradictions. All these pieces of ourselves come together like a kaleidoscope, beautiful and colorful and always changing. We let go of the idea that the pieces need to line up perfectly for us to be okay. We can see amazing harmony in our lives just by being aware of what's happening inside ourselves, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. about how addiction affects our bodies, but the physical part of recovery is ignored to a surprising degree. We free our minds and spirits, turning them over to a higher power, but our bodies can be another story. Our physical, emotional, and spiritual lives are interwoven. We can think of them separately, but we cannot experience them separately. If we don't deal with the physical part of our recovery, we run the risk of becoming disconnected from our spiritual path. Taking good care of our bodies can be a challenge. We go back and forth between indulging ourselves in ways that feel selfish or excessive and punishing ourselves or piling on restrictions in an effort to control patterns that feel like symptoms of our addiction. After long struggles with ways and means to drive ourselves back into healthy behavior, we find that what we really need to do is surrender. Often it's when we help a newer member work the steps that we see how they apply to our lives today. Even though we may have beliefs about what a relationship with our bodies should be like, most of us feel we are not living up to that standard. There are lots of people who want to tell us how we should do it, but taking an honest look at how we relate with our bodies is new and scary. Too often we hold back from the freedom our program has to offer because we are not entirely ready to let go. We are aware of our imperfection, but see it as something we should control, not something we can surrender. Our sense of humor allows us to squeeze a positive attitude out of a negative self-image. When we are able to laugh at ourselves, we lighten up a little. We do the work, but we also learn to play. We see our defects, and we also see what there is to love about us. Balance in our lives is dynamic, like walking on a tightrope. It only works when we are moving. We are constantly in motion, and so is the way we see ourselves. It's a relationship. A relationship with our bodies is just that. A relationship. It can be healthy and rewarding, or abusive and destructive. Mostly, it's somewhere in between. We live and grow, get better and worse and find that the process is rarely a straight line in one direction. Like any relationship, it requires communication and responsibility, paying attention to our bodies, giving them what they need, caring for them, and seeking help when necessary. For most of us, this does not come naturally. A member shared, I needed to learn to treat my body like something. 47. 48. Other than my enemy, very few of us come to know with education or experience in what is good for us. Even if we did no better, living into active addiction means we spent long periods of time abusing and neglecting our bodies. Our relationship to our bodies has been troubled. We spend a lot of time trying to escape them, after all. We push the limits, not only through combining drugs, overdosing, or substituting in order to get high, but in other ways as well. Staying awake for days and then 
how to take care of our bodies takes time, and so does healing. We may want results as soon as we start, but mostly they accumulate gradually. The quality of this relationship varies over time. Sometimes we care for ourselves and sometimes we don't. Sometimes we confuse what we look like with who or how we are, and think that changing our outsides will fix the void we feel inside. Poor self-care can be a sign that we are in trouble, either in terms of our self-esteem or our priorities. When we are not taking care of ourselves physically, chances are we are not taking very good care of ourselves emotionally or spiritually either. On the other hand, mood changes can be a sign of a physical problem. When we notice a change in how we feel or react, it's usually worth looking a little deeper. Some issues or life changes bring adjustments to our relationship with our bodies, like quitting smoking, going through pregnancy or menopause, or recovering from an injury. Taking a job that is more demanding than we are used to or working different hours can really affect how we feel and how we take care of ourselves. Emotional changes, too, like beginning or ending a romantic relationship, can change the way we see and relate with our bodies. Whether the changes are ultimately for better or worse is a choice we get to make. Caring for ourselves leads to other kinds of freedom, including increased energy, freedom of movement, self-esteem, and discipline. We develop the ability to take action in other areas of our lives. If we are resisting a larger change, then we are likely to resist the smaller changes that would make it possible. When we are not taking action on a particular area of our recovery, it's often an indicator that transformation is coming. Breakdown often precedes breakthrough, letting ourselves go. In the third step we make, the decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood Him. Most of us make that decision for the first time early in our recovery, but our desire for control expresses itself in many different ways. It is not a decision we make only once. Each time we return to it our resistance lessens, our commitment deepens, and our ability to let go increases. Some suggest that we are in a process of progressive surrender. We take back control and let it go again, each time finding that we can let go a little more, and that some of what we do that last time we can now let go for good. Next time we look, we find that we are still holding on here and there. I can turn over this part of my life, we say, but that other part is my job to handle. Finding the line between personal responsibility and willful, moving clean approval graph for decision at WSG 2012. Chapter 4, Our Physical Self. 49. Control is a challenge. One member shared that for her, the real surrender is surrendering to the fact that I will be surrendering for the rest of my life. It's different for each of us. In fact, for most of us, the answers change over the course of our recovery. Feeling at home in our bodies can seem to be beyond our wildest dreams. We feel too fat or too thin, too tall or too short, too old or too young. Some of us feel we were born in the wrong time, place, gender, or culture. We may hardly recognize the person we see in the mirror, or in photographs, that can't be me. When something feels wrong inside, we look outside to explain it. Our sense of alienation surfaces in all sorts of ways. We may simply feel uncomfortable in our own skin. We bring these issues into recovery.
free with us, but it may be a while before we see that they are important. Many of us will share in meetings about having been bones and when we got clean. What we talk less about is our response when our bodies start to heal and we begin putting on weight. Some of us find that once the weight starts coming on, it doesn't stop. We might joke that we put down the spoon and pick up the fork, but it's not always funny. We may feel deep shame or horror at the weight gain. Some of us consider using again to deal with it. We may stay clean but find that compulsive behavior, eating to discomfort, vomiting, fasting, abusing laxatives, experimenting with radical diets, its own problems and its own rush. Obsession with our weight can also let us back to control games with ourselves. We withhold food, exercise compulsively, and punish ourselves in order to drive ourselves into shape. Substitution can be a good tool for keeping us away from that first drug, or for helping us to replace the struggle behavior, but it can also create its own problems. Obsessive and compulsive patterns other than using drugs often emerge after we get clean. Many of us find that our relationship with food is complicated. We may never have known how to eat properly, and in our addiction, frankly, other things were more important.
some of us have about sex. We start by accepting that there is a lot we don't understand. Being willing to see what has created our views on our own sexuality and the sexuality of others can help us to understand our beliefs. Many of us are a lot more comfortable with sex than with intimacy. We struggle with issues of self-loathing, contempt for others, and abuse. We may notice that we would rather have unsafe sex than risk a difficult conversation. Having honest, open dialogue with our sponsor brings us to a new level of trust. As we experience intimacy in that relationship, our ability to be intimate with our partners and with others increases as well. Some of our most deeply held shame derives from the things we did sexually. Our past behaviors may reflect how desperate we were to get and use more, or they may have been the best we could do to find love and connection. Sexual abuse may also be part of our story. This can be incredibly difficult to talk about. We may believe we are the only one. On the contrary, it is remarkably common among addicts. Finding the words, and a safe place to say them, can be the difference between being able to live with ourselves and spending our lives on the run from our past. Examine our history and fourth step and begin sorting out to hear from what happened to us or what we did. Healing takes time, but it does happen. We must be patient with ourselves. Gradually, we come to experience freedom from some of our deepest wounds. As we begin to clear up some of the confusion and contradiction in our lives, we can move forward with less of the baggage we brought in with us. We struggle with relationships. Experienced members suggest that we give ourselves a break for the first year, stay out of relationships, and put our recovery first, with few of us pieces wise advice. We come into recovery lonely, horny, and insecure. We are emotionally raw, and our judgment is still pretty impaired. We run headlong into relationships only to discover how challenging they are. Two sick people rarely make a well couple. We mistake novelty for love and find ourselves deep in commitment almost before we know each other, or fear commitment so much that we don't give our partner a chance. We open the door for relapse when we get caught in loops of obsession and compulsion. We try, and sometimes we make mistakes. Each mistake carries a gift and a hazard. We can learn from our mistakes and use them, or let our guilt and remorse drive us into a corner or out of the program. The more practice we get at using the steps and other tools of recovery, the more we are able to use our mistakes to propel us forward. Living Clean Approval Draft for Decision at WSC 2012. 52. We define ourselves partly through our sexuality. For some, that definition is a major portion of our identity. Sometimes we seem to use it like a weapon to justify our feeling different. We can be much more aware of the people who are not open to us than those who are. In the rooms of now we are welcomed regardless of our sexuality. We find people who love us and with whom we feel comfortable no matter what our sexuality or our beliefs about sexuality. Although some of us arrived in the fellowship secure in our sexual identity, others of us struggle with confusion or distortions about our gender or orientation. We may have engaged in behaviors that conflicted with our beliefs in order to continue using or to gain acceptance from others. Or we chased sex the same way we chased drugs, feeling just as powerless and out of control. 
some of us followed those drives into relationship after relationship without ever really feeling fulfilled. Many of us confused sexual connections with intimacy, and became so divorced from our feelings and desire for emotional connection that we would settle for physical interaction. This can follow as well into our recovery and may point to an ongoing struggle with opening up the emotional intimacy. For those of us who use sex as a way to move through the world, it may take quite some time to figure out the difference between being sexual and being intimate. Working through these issues takes time, trust in our sponsors and close friends, willingness to challenge our assumptions, faith in the process, and ultimately self-acceptance. The next chapter will address our relationships in more detail. What we will say here is that part of learning how to live in our bodies is learning how to acknowledge the reality of our sexuality. We want to learn to express our sexuality in healthy and fulfilling ways something that was unimaginable in our act of addiction. Sex is different when we're clean. When we are neither numbed out nor artificially stimulated, we can be present to our own experience and to our partner in a very different way. Sometimes this can be frightening, sometimes it can be additionally exciting. Finding pleasure in our sexuality without thinking of it as a means of exchange or power can be a great freedom. For some of us, this takes longer than it does for others. We can enjoy ourselves and each other fully, in the moment, and learn what it really is to connect. We can be intimate, we can open up and be real. We don't have to use each other as a drug. When we treat each other as human beings, we find our own dignity. Thrill-seeking and adventure Long after the obsession to use is lifted, many of us still seek a rush in other ways. The drive for excitement leads us to live full and exciting lives, rich with adventure. We are unafraid to take risks and pursue the opportunity to do the things we always wish we could. Sometimes, though, it seems like we just get strung out on our own adrenaline. Whether it's gambling, sex, or creating drama in our lives, we can ramp up so fast that it's hard to scale back down. We may distract ourselves with risky behavior when we are trying to fill a void or block a feeling. It is up to each of us to find a balance between chasing a destructive rush and really living our lives to the fullest. Surprising numbers of us are fond of extreme sports. A member who spends his weekend scaling glaciers said, in those moments when I really am on the edge of life and death, when living clean approval graph for decision at WSC 2012. Chapter 4, Our Physical Selves. 53. I'm not sure how I'm going to find my next goal, then I feel present to the moment. I'm not thinking about the bills or the wife or the job just how good it is to be alive and how I'm going to stay that way. Some of us take on competitive sports or bodybuilding and get really excited about what we are doing. We find a passion and commitment for these activities that seem lost to our addiction. We have the freedom to try new things and take new risks. Many of us are partial to motorcycles, and a similar impulse may lead us to ride. We like the sense of freedom.